I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And in this Italy travel video, we'll share how to travel Italy by train. We spent three weeks travelling through northern Italy by train and we visited seven cities along the way. So in this video, we're going to be sharing all of our experiences as well as plenty of Italy travel tips so that you can plan your next trip to Italy. In our travels together over the last 10 years or so, we've used trains a lot in our journeys and we've been very impressed with the amenities on Italy's trains. Our train travels through Italy are part of a larger overland European trip. So we started from France, we made our way through Italy and now heading on to Slovenia and beyond. Our first stop in Italy was the seaside town of San Remo. That was a great introduction to Italy and the Italian way of life. We loved sampling the pizza and the pasta there and it was a really charming port city. Yeah, and then from San Remo, we moved on to Genoa, which is a really, really big seaside city. It's the biggest port of all of Italy. Yeah, and that's got lots of hills, lots of great views, and it's got free funiculars to get you up to the top of the mountain, which is a cool feature. From Genoa, we moved on to Milan, which is the second biggest city in Italy. And we got there just before Milan Fashion Week. Yeah, so Milan is just a big city. It's the financial centre of Italy. It's quite a cool, hip and happening place to be. Yeah, definitely. We enjoyed having evening aperitivos at little bars and restaurants. And yeah, it was a really fun place to visit. So from there, we went to Fair Verona. Yeah, it was a very beautiful city, Verona. And from there, we went to Venice. And we can understand why it's a popular tourist destination because it is such a beautiful city. Yeah, it is really such a unique city. And we did our gondola ride and that was really cool. And we were there during Carnivale. So we got to see everyone dress up in their masquerades. Their masquerades. It was really cool. And from there, our final destination in Italy was Trieste, which is a port side city close to Slovenia. The total distance that we travelled in Italy was 750 kilometres or 460 miles. The total time was around 10 hours by train and our trips ranged between 14 minutes to 2 hours. Yeah, so generally around the 2 hour mark and the total trip cost was €66.90 per person which was quite an affordable getaway. Yeah. There are a range of different rail services that you can use in Italy. So it ranges from the high speed rail of La Frecce and then down to the low speed of the regional trains. Most of our trips were from the Regionale Veloce. They're semi-fast trains and then we also did the Regio Express. La Frecce trains are the most expensive, the regional trains are the slowest and the cheapest. In terms of your budget, I think the Regionale Veloce were a good balance between getting there in a reasonably quick manner and being affordable as well. There are some private rail companies that operate in Italy and there are also the high speed rail networks that connect to other countries in Europe. But most trains in Italy are run by Trenitalia, which is the national rail provider. Now we're going to talk about what to expect when you get to the station in Italy. So the stations generally are in the centre of town. They're generally well connected by public transport. You can usually find like bike share services outside, which is quite a handy feature. Now they don't generally have Wi-Fi at the stations. They do have public toilets, but often you have to pay to use. Expect to pay around a euro and make sure you have the exact change for that. And there's usually food places and shops at the station as well. A couple of things that we found quite useful in stations in Italy was that the stations are well signposted and there are digital boards that tell you the platform and the trains. The announcements are in both Italian and English, which is quite helpful. Yeah, and all the signage is in Italian and English as well. Now we're going to talk about what to expect when you're on the train. 
On the Regionale Veloce trains, we found that they were really good access for mobility impaired people. They were generally level access with the platform, lots of space. There were also lots of bike storage areas and even electronic bike charging stations, which I found was a really good feature. In terms of storage, we had plenty of space for our bags. There was an overhead compartment that was quite handy. And the seats were very comfortable. They had adjustable armrests. There was even USB charging ports and normal electrical charging outlets, which is a very handy feature. Yeah, and most of the trains had flip down desks so you could work on your laptop. Yep, and the bathrooms were really good. They were very spacious. There was room for like a wheelchair or a pram or whatever you needed in there. And they were clean, they were well equipped, and they even had hand dryers as well, which was quite handy. Yeah, so the tip if you don't want to have to pay at the stations, just make sure or you wait until you're on the train or go to the toilet just before you get off the train. And there's hand sanitizer throughout the carriages as well, which is another great feature. Now there isn't Wi-Fi on board the trains or at least not on board the cheaper trains that we took. There was sometimes a local Wi-Fi, just like an entertainment network, which would tell you things like the weather and the next station that was coming up. But generally I wasn't able to access the internet when I was on the train. So the trains had announcements and signs in both Italian and English, and the trains that we took didn't have any cafes or food service on board. You can get your tickets at the station, either through the unmanned kiosk or through the manned ticket booths. And if you buy your ticket at the station, be sure to validate it. If you don't validate it, you'll get a fine. If the ticket machines aren't working, you can buy a ticket from the conductor on the train, but make sure you seek out the train conductor and buy the ticket from them rather than letting them come to you because if they catch you without a ticket, then you will get a fine. Or alternatively, you can buy them online. And that's what we did through our travels in Italy. So we used the website and app Trainline, and we found that to be really handy. It's the same price as what you'd get at the station, there's no extra commission that gets paid and we just found it really easy and helpful. Yeah, and it's good to know your train time in advance and not having to worry about validating your ticket. So some general tips when traveling by the train in Italy. In getting your tickets, it's better to book in advance. There is dynamic pricing in trains in Italy, meaning that the prices will change depending on how close you get to your, your train time. So uh, we tended to book around five days beforehand and that way we were able to get cheaper prices and there was more availability of options as well. When you get to the station, make sure you've got your ticket on you. It can be digital or paper, either one's fine. When we were traveling, we only needed to show the digital ticket. They did generally check your tickets on the train, so just make sure you do have a ticket. Now, the other things that you need to be aware of when traveling during COVID are that you need an FP2 style mask in order to get on trains in Italy. They're the more stricter standard of mask and you can get them pretty much anywhere in Italy. They're pretty well available and they're reasonably cheap. Yeah, and if you have an N95 mask, that's equivalent to the FFP2s, so you can use that instead. In order to travel in most trains in Italy, you'll also need some sort of COVID certificate, a green pass. And so that will show that you're either vaccinated, recovered or tested. So make sure that you have that on you. We did see some people getting checked by police because I think they were traveling without that certificate. So beware of that. We recommend that you get to the station around 20 minutes before the train departs. Uh, when you're on the platform, quite often the train signs won't get updated until about five to 10 minutes before the train arrives. And that's because the train services are very frequent on the same platforms. Yeah, so make sure that you don't get on the wrong train because there might be multiple trains that are coming to that platform within close proximity of each other. Yeah, and also when you're arriving at your destination, don't always get off at the first stop because the cities may have multiple train stops. 
Yeah, so when we were in Genoa, there were multiple train stations that start with Genoa, and we got off at the first one we saw, which was 20 minutes from the actual platform we should have got off. But fortunately, we were able to catch another train, and that was fine. Just keep that in mind get off at the right platform. Yeah, it's quite common that the names of Italian cities can be different in Italian to what they are in English. Venice, for example, is Venezia, Milan, Milano, uh, Genoa, Genova. So just make sure that you know both spellings. So that can be a little bit confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, you should be fine. So what did we like about trains in Italy? Well, firstly, they were generally on time, which was really good. And the trains themselves were quite modern and I loved all the facilities. The bathrooms in particular were really spacious and really clean and well equipped. And I really liked the little functionality like the uh, USB charging ports and even the e-bike charging ports. That was a really nice touch. Yeah, and I just generally liked traveling by train through Italy, especially Northern Italy. It's really scenic. You've got plenty of vineyards that you travel past. You have these amazing vistas of snow-capped mountains in the distance. It's really beautiful. So what didn't we like about train travel in Italy? I guess the toilet thing at the stations was a little bit annoying for me. Paying for toilets at the station. Yeah, paying for toilets. And for me, not having Wi-Fi on the cheaper trains that we took, that was a little bit frustrating, but not a deal breaker. There really weren't that many things to not like about the trains in Italy. It was really good on the whole. So overall, we highly recommend traveling by train in Italy. And we do want to leave you with a few Italian words to make your Italian train travel a bit easier. So what are they? (laughs) Yeah, so first one is stazione ferroviaria, and that's train station. And then we've got treno, which is train. Binari is the platform or the train tracks. Servizi, which is the toilets or the toilet services. And then finally you have biglietti, which are tickets. We hope you enjoyed this video about train travel in Italy. And if you did, give it a like and let us know in the comments. If you want more great travel tips and advice, and also great travel inspiration, then subscribe to join us on our bucket list journey to hit 100 countries. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.